Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today we're going to look at the AN Gray 39 and radio wireline interfacing. So here we go. This is the setup I'm going to demonstrate today. We're going to be using a Gray 39 to connect to a CB radio and do some remote work with it. Um, I We know it works with military radios. Not everybody has military radios. I don't have military radios and this gives us the ability to demonstrate and show you know, make a video of how it works. More people can see it actually functioning as a radio remote. Um, Gray 39 is basically replaced for the old Gray 6. And one of the main reasons they did that is the new radios coming out had the uh, the U229 or 182, the, the five pin handset connectors like this. And they used a H189 or an H250 handset. Now the difference between these two is I didn't know this to a while back is that an H189 handset is uh, unit repairable. You can actually take it apart and replace the elements where if you've ever tried to fix an H250, uh, I've done that. It's You throw them in the garbage. That's the main difference. So this is the basic setup we're going to use. We're using field wire. Uh, the manual says you can go roughly two miles using uh, WD-1 field wire. I have, I think it's about a one-click reel I'm going to put in the middle. And uh, this is the, basically the setup. We're going to separate everything and uh, go from there. After we do this with just the gray sixes, we're going to go to the next step, which is putting an SB-22 in the picture. Now, this was an Army project back when they first came out with the, uh, one of the reasons they came out with the, the, the gray 39 was to allow it to be remoted over uh, switchboards. And basically what this does is you take the gray 39 and connect it to one line pack in the SB-22, connect the uh, TA-312 to another line pack, and the operator has the ability then to become the radio operator per se and the switchboard operator. So they cannot talk on the radio and listen for calls to come in and answer them. And then they can either route them by calling an SB-22, uh, subscri excuse me, a TA-312 subscriber and say, hey, you got a radio call you need, or the other way around with a 312 calls the operator and says, hey, I need to talk to so-and-so on the radio. And then they just patch it in using patch cords. And uh, like I said, this was uh, developed as part of the Army's uh, radio wireline interface program in the 1970s. I've never seen this done before, so this will be something new to me. And then we'll just talk over the, the, the CB radios like we did before. Um, I want to try, if I get a chance, to put an EE-8 in here to see if you have to actually use a TA-312 or if an EE-8, or then maybe if an EE-8 works, maybe then any uh, field phone with a push-to-talk will work on this. But that's for something later. Right now, the goal is to show it like this with a TA-312. This is the actual uh, wiring setup that I used on this just breaks it down. The one in the manual is really small and difficult to read, so I made a new one and color coded it so you can see it better. Basically, uh, it, it operates in, in serial with the, the, the components. So instead of everything being connected up like you do where uh, you parallel or hook two, three, four field phones go, so they all talk on the line at the same time, big party line. This does the same thing with these right here. You take a piece of field wire and you run it from the uh, the local one, and then you split it and you connect one end of the one field wire to the the remote end of the gray 39, and the other end connects over to the line pack terminal on the back of the SB22. Then you put a jumper between the other one and the uh, gray 39 remote. Basically, this makes you know your circuit. Then the interesting part is you have to take a U229 connector. And wired as such, pin A and pin C want soldered and connected here. And you put one wire into the uh, the SB22 line pack where the uh, the they connect, like I show right here. And what this does is when the PTT on the 312, op 312 guy keys his handset, it will actually key the remote and make the circuit work. So basically, the audio is flowing directly from the uh, SB22 and the TA312, not the handset here, but the PTT is being controlled by the Gray39, and that's how it's set up to work. On the other end, uh, basically, uh, I used one of my adapter cables I built the terminal strip on. It's worked the easiest to figure the wiring out. Um, I had to put this uh, this capacitor in here because I was just it's 
I experimented with this for about an hour and a half, and this worked the best. I tried different size resistors. I don't have any impedance matching transformers at the time. I'll have to get some. So I put this capacitor in, and it seemed to work the best. You get some hum, so there's an impedance mismatch somewhere. And I'm going to explore what size, uh, what, not, not only what size, what circuit I need to build to make a little impedance matching network so that we get rid of that. But this is basically it right here. Um, it breaks down the uh, U228 and 229 that connect here into the individual wires and then connect it to a mic plug and an external speaker jack. Now you have to have the external speaker jack because that's where, how you get the audio out of the radio into the system to flow all the way back down. So you hear it through the handset or headset and then the microphone just plugs in the microphone. And these are different connections on the CB, it's not just you know one plug like the, like right here on the uh, the handset or headset connector where everything's one. It's two separate connectors, so that's how I did that. Okay, next slide here. This is a little bit more in depth. How I did things right here. This shows the actual connectors themselves. Um, the uh, the two twenty eight right here that plugs into the handset connector on the the uh, gray thirty nine. Uh, this is the small. Not the small, but the medium-sized phono, phono or earphone jack plug you'd see on stuff that plugs in the back of the CB's radio external speaker. And this is the uh, actual four-wire microphone plug. These two right here you can get on either eBay or uh, Amazon. This one, I'm not sure. I had a bunch of these from something. So this is basically uh, what I used. And uh, this is a, a new setup for me. I'm trying a new software. We'll see how this works out and, uh, you know, leave comments what you think about it. Okay, now we're going to go on to actually setting it up and doing it uh, out on a patio. Okay, this is the remote end of the link. And we have our uh, Gray 39 remote end right here with the handset. Um, connect with these alligator clips to this... Uh, it used to be one click, it's pretty close to a one click roll of WD1 field wire. Uh, ignore the color of the alligator clips, I just grabbed two that were different colors to put them on there. And then on, here's my uh, CB radio that I'm going to use for the uh, remote end of the, the, the radio link to simulate talking to the radio net. Have my handset uh, set up there. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, quick to a quick shutdown and go do a video of the, uh, the local one of the radios at and the Gray 39. And we'll come back and we'll do a little bit more in de detail about what we got going here and we'll do some tests. Okay, here's the, uh, the local end of the end of the radio is the Gray 39 remote. It's there on the left, connected with the handset. We're not going to use the handset. I used that when I was getting my audio level set correctly. Um, then in the middle you see the little black terminal board and the cable, that's the interface cable, allows us to connect the CB radio on the far right to the gray 39. Then out of view is the antenna for the CB and also my uh, portable 12 volt power supply. Uh, next we'll go ahead and uh, shut this down, go back and set up again, we'll actually do some tests. Okay, now we're going to do some tests. Uh, a few things about the setup on the gray 39. I'm going to leave it set on radio so the Audio comes through the handset, and the reason that is I'm getting some really bad feedback when I'm running on speaker. Um, I need to figure out some impedance matching, but it works okay over the handset. I'll put it on speaker and let you see what it sounds like, but I think that I'm just a little bit too close to my, uh, between my two radios, and that's part of it. And also, like I said, there's a small impedance mismatch. And basically, the settings you want to use is, like I said, it's radio, which puts the radio remote on the, the, the handset, radio and speaker, actually puts the, uh, here, there you go, you can hear it. Cast one, two, three, cast, cast. That's how it sounds on speaker, so that's what the issue is. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn it back to, to, to radio. And here's your volume adjust right there, and that's pretty much it. And basically this was used to remote the uh, radio, or an operator from the radio, up to two miles according to the book. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do some radio checks. Now, first thing I'll do is I'll call from the gray 39 through all the field wire and all the setup and everything to the remote end over the radio to this to the CB right there. So here we go. Test one two three four five five four three two one. Test out. Test test. Okay, didn't sound too bad. Next we'll go the other way. We'll actually call from the radio, and we'll go to the handset. I'll try to hold the handset up to the speaker or to the, excuse me to the microphone on the, the camera so you can hear it. 
And here we go. Test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test out. Test 1, 2, 3. So you can see it doesn't sound that bad. Like I said, there's some idiosyncrasies in getting it set up. I had to really mess with getting the volume set up on the CB because that actually controls the audio that you push into the system. So might be some more tweaking that can be done with that. Also the audio volume level control here can be tweaked to help cut down. And like I said, I have an impedance mismatch. So I'll we'll go ahead and shut down. The next thing we'll do is we'll bring out the SB22 switchboard and we'll hook this up to an SB22 switchboard to demonstrate how a TA312 phone can actually do a phone patch through the switchboard and talk over the radio and that's that's sort of why I want to do the video. So I'll go ahead and shut down and set that up so we'll see you in a little bit. Okay now we got everything set up. I've got the SP22 into the picture and a TA312 and the Ray 39. Now I tried this several times and it does not work as it states in the manual. So I did some more reading in the manual and the manual says sometimes the operator for the SP22 will have to do the push to talk keying for the subscriber in the 312 or you can't get the audio to go off. I find that interesting. They address it in the manual. I'm almost wondering if this didn't work directly from the 312, but you had to have the operator intervene all the time, but it is what it is. I'm going to keep exploring and doing some research. We'll find out if we can get it to work as they describe it in there, but right now we're going to do it with where the operator has to key the radio circuit. So basically you'd be sitting there like this and you might get the 312 calling in. And saying, hey, I need to call uh, so and so on the radio. Operator answers it. 312 guy says, hey, I need to talk so and so on the radio. Operator says, okay, stand by. And they take and plug the 312 guy into this is the radio circuit right there. I got the radio right here, we'll make sure the volume's good, and then the operator's will key is uh, handset. Test one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, over. When the subscriber on the 312 says over. Then the operator on the SP22 releases the push to talk and the system goes back to receive mode. This one receive sounds like on it. Here we'll go ahead and I'll hold the uh, handset up to this, the microphone on the radio. Test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test out. So that's how it works. Like I said, I wish it worked better. I um, wish I actually could get it to work where you could key it. Now the operator itself, if I unplug the, uh, and leave the operator plugged into it directly, the operator can key the radio. Here we go. Uh, plug in the radio. Test one two three four five five four three two one. Test out. Test one two three four five. Test one two three four five five four three two one. Test out. Test one two three four five. A little bit squealing because I have some uh, impedance mismatch, but that's basically how it works. Um, it's wired according to the diagram. Basically, I came off the. Uh, one of the pieces of the 312 actually runs to one of the terminals here. The other one actually runs to the terminal, the binding post for the radio in the TA312. And I have a small jumper piece that goes between the top terminal and here. This is the what translates the PTT from the SP22 into the gray 39 right there. Uh, it all works using the alternate method they described, but not with the uh, SB22 being able to key the uh, Gray 39 radio remote. I even tried it with a uh, E8, same thing, so I'm thinking this is how it operated. It doesn't really work that difficult. Um, just like I said, the uh, person on the 312, when they get done talking to the radio, they need to say over so that the 
312 operator or SB22 operator knows to unkey the microphone. And uh, that's about it. As I uh, keep working on this and find more information, more stuff, and get it to actually work, I'll go ahead and I'll do uh, I'll do another video. So hopefully we find that out. Thanks for watching.